Good morning and welcome to Trey Runs Wild Catch and Cook Edition. This morning I'm going to teach you how to find one of the most common and easily identified mushrooms out there and it's called the oyster mushroom. Well good morning. Excuse me for looking a little rough. I uh, just completed a 20 mile trail run in the woods this morning and in the middle of it we had two big thunderstorms come through so I'm not only soaking wet but I am uh, pretty worn out as well. So uh, when I was running I noticed that uh, yesterday we had 90 degrees and with the new rains come through uh, the oysters are definitely up. Uh, anytime you have warm weather followed by rains it's a good time to go out and look for mushrooms. Oysters are no uh, exception. So I know I noticed this flush close to the truck and I already picked a couple of them, uh, but I'm going to show you uh, how to identify oysters and then later we're going to cook them up into a meal. Alright, so what we have here is a variation of an oyster mushroom. And as you can see, um, it is attached to a log. And one of the first identifiers about oyster mushrooms is that they always grow on wood. If you see a white shelf-like mushroom that is growing on the ground. It is not an oyster mushroom. Uh, I was here just maybe an hour ago and this flush has expanded even in the hour since I first walked by. So I'm going to pick a couple of these and we're going to go through some identifiers and hopefully that will be helpful to you in your uh, quest for foraging. I should also let you know that I am not a certified mycologist. I have taken some classes by a certified mycologist and I have eaten these mushrooms uh, before and I am very confident in my own selection. However, uh, as with any video series or any how-to channel, uh, Cavit Emptor, Buyer Beware, or in this case, um, These are uh, tips for identification. Ultimately, you are responsible for final determination of your species and the edibility of the mushrooms that you are picking. So, let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, so I brought the mushrooms back to, to my vehicle and we're just gonna go through them and I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I use to identify an oyster mushroom. The nice thing about the oyster mushroom is if you take care uh, with the identifiers, there's really not much else that looks like it out there. And they're going to be a pretty safe and common edible uh, for a beginner mushroomer. Uh, so as you can see, there's a couple bugs that are floating around on these. That's really pretty common uh, to get one that doesn't have any in the wild. It's pretty rare. So couple things we're going to look for when we're talking about oyster mushrooms is oyster mushrooms generally have kind of a very short uh, stalk. As you can see in this one, uh, you can see how far the stripes go down onto the stalk and the stalk attaches to wood. Um, very short and stubby. This is a nice little batch right here. Oyster mushrooms are also sold commercially and you'll find them in a grocery store. Uh, if you can't find them in your grocery store, look at like an Asian grocery and chances are you're, you're probably going to find there. Also like Whole Foods uh, sells mushroom kits and one of the mushrooms that they sell is the oyster mushroom. So if you look at the shape and size of the oyster mushroom, uh, they vary. They can be quite large. Uh, this is probably about, you know, five inches across. They can get a little bit bigger. They have a scalloped edge. If you think of an oyster shell, think of this shape of this mushroom. Um, they're kind of that scalloped shape. As you can see, they do have true gills. The, uh, the mushroom is, is somewhat meaty, um, and the, if you smell it, it has a distinct smell. It, it is a pleasant smell. It smells good, and that is something that um, I use as an identifier as well. Do not pick suspected oyster mushrooms off of conifer trees. There is a variation that grows on conifer trees. I think it's called angel's wings, I think maybe. And that one, uh, there has been some uh, slight, or some small reports of people having adverse reactions to that. So uh, do not pick what you believe to be oyster mushrooms on conifer trees. Uh, so let's talk about bugs. Uh, 
Another thing that I use for an identifier on oyster mushrooms is something that I call an oyster beetle. I have no idea what the real name of the beetle is, but it is a little brown and black beetle that is really common on an oyster mushroom. And of course I cleaned some of these off before I brought them to the car, so let's see if I can find one here for you. Well, there's, there's one bug, and that one isn't the one I was referring to, but that one's pretty common, too. <laughs> okay, here is the one of the beetles that I was referring to. As you can see, it's a brown and black small beetle. This is super common, and it obviously has a relationship with oyster mushrooms because anytime you find them, you're almost going to find these beetles. <laughs> so another thing to be careful for uh, when you're cleaning your mushrooms is uh, you can see that this is bug damage right here and the thing that you have to be careful with a mushroom that has bug damage where a bug has been munching for a while is it's possible that there could be some grubs in there uh, because of the larval stage of the beetles so when we get back to the kitchen we're going to clean these up I'm going to show you how I do that and then we're going to cook them up well as you can see um, a lot of these mushrooms have some dirt and and uh, kind of litter from the, the forest floor. Uh, I did get these pretty low on the log next to the ground. Uh, so they do have little pieces of bark and a little bit of um, <clears throat> vegetable matter from, from the host and also from the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give these a quick rinse um, in a colander and uh, Nothing super fancy, but just to kind of get the big light chunks off, and then I'll go ahead and cut off the rough parts with a knife. So we'll go ahead and do that. Some mushrooms you don't want to introduce water to, just because they can get a little bit of mush, a little bit mushy. Um, oysters, I don't really have a problem with it. Um, as you can see, there's one of those black and white beetles, and of course, there is a grub. So anytime you have a lot of insect damage like that, you want to be cognizant of of uh, the little critters in your shrooms because that's some protein I don't really care to get. So I've got the oysters all rinsed off. The other good thing about rinsing them off is it gives you a chance to have some water uh, kind of in between the gills and to help get out any sort of critters that might be in there. Okay, so I've got the oysters all washed up. I'm just going to give them once over, put them on a paper towel to kind of rinse off a little bit. I just want to, once again, kind of look through the gills for any bugs, look for any pieces of bark. There's actually a kind of a rough spot where the stalk connects, and that can be a popular place for critters to lodge. So I'm just going to cut some of that scrap out. Um, as you can see, uh, here's a pretty good example of the, the uh, stalk on these. Uh, normally if it's, these were connected pretty low to the log, so the stalks aren't real prevalent, but if you get them on the side of a tree, uh, sometimes these are much more prevalent and easy to see. So as you can see, that's a pretty good looking mushroom right there, nice and clean. I'm just going to cut that stalk off because it's a little bit thicker, just for purposes of even cooking. So these are fairly fragile. You can just rip them apart with your hands pretty easily. You don't really need to do much cutting. Um, As you can see, there's a little grub right there too. Blends in pretty well with the white mushroom, so always be on the lookout for those. They're not going to hurt you if you miss one. They're going to cook up, but if you're anything like me, I am not a fan of extra protein in my meals. So I'm gonna cut away that stock just because, as you can see, that's where a lot of the bug damage is. Those holes are larval holes. Um, Pretty good chance if I cut that open, there's going to be grubs in there. That's why I just don't even mess with it. As you can see, bug damage in the stock. We're just going to get rid of that. And then that leaves us with some nice pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and, and cut all the stalks off of these. As you can see right there, we've got a little critter in there, a little beetle. So we're going to take him out. That's why it's really important to go through the gills uh, do a nice one once over. I just like to cut away the dirt as well. As you can see, there's a few grubs in here. 
not super duper uh, primo, but as you can see, the stalks, the holes, that's where the beetles get in and, and leave the grubs. So we're just going to get rid of those grub holes so that we know we're not getting any extra animals. Pretty prevalent in there. You can see the little holes there. So there's probably going to be grubs in here. I think I'm just going to probably. Uh, it looks okay. Oh, it looks okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean up the rest of these. As you can see, this bug damage, I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm guessing there's going to be critters in there. Oh, yeah. See? See these holes in here? That's all bug damage. Um, there's going to be some nasties in here. So Some people don't let that bother them. I'm not one of them, so I'm just going to take a real good peek at some of this stuff before I put it in the cook, cook pan. Yep, see? There's the grubs right there. So it's pretty hard to... Um, you're going to get some grubs. I'm just going to... Okay, so I've got the oysters pretty well cleaned up. I've got all the inhabitants evicted out. I'm just going to go ahead and pat them just to get up any extra moisture that I can. It's not a big deal, but it'll just help them from splattering a little bit when they're in the frying pan. There's a, oysters are pretty versatile. You can really do a lot of different things with them. Um, one of the easiest ways is just to do a quick saute with some, some butter and uh, maybe a little garlic. Um, you can put them in omelets. You can actually coat them with a batter and deep fry them. Um, lots of different things. You can put them in uh, pastas and cream sauces. Uh, they, they hold their, their shape pretty well. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and and tear them up into bite-sized pieces at this point. Um, they're, like I said, they're pretty, you can, they tear pretty easy. You don't really need a knife with them. So while the pan is heating up, I have it kind of on medium, medium high heat. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get our ingredients ready for the, the second part. Okay, so as you can see, I have about uh, a tablespoon and a half of butter. I have some fresh sage and about two cloves of garlic. So the fresh sage, you don't need fresh. If you um, have dried sage, go ahead and use about two tablespoons. I'm going to go ahead and chop this up fairly fine. All right, our pan feels like it's heating up. We're going to go ahead and add about uh, maybe a tablespoon, maybe two of EVO, extra virgin olive oil. You know your oil's ready when it will sizzle when you get water in there. So it's a little bit hot right now. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Probably have a little bit more oil than I need in there, but we're going to go ahead and put the mushrooms in. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cook these down. Uh, one of the keys about cooking mushrooms is Many wild mushrooms have a lot of moisture in them, and the moisture will kind of come out as the mushrooms cook. Generally a rule of thumb that I use for knowing when a mushroom is done cooking is when the moisture kind of starts to evaporate back um, and onions will get a little caramelized, or the mushrooms will get a little caramelized, uh, that's when I like to um, add a little garlic skin on my pan here. From I used my wooden spoon is kind of a garlic press. So when the mushrooms get a little caramelized, that's kind of when um, I kind of know that they're all set. So we have a couple options at this point. Um, as the moisture kind of comes out of these, we can set them aside and set the, the drippings aside and after we've added the sage and garlic we can go ahead and make a roux with about uh, a couple more tablespoons of, of butter and make a nice little gravy with the, with, I'm sorry, with the flour. The thing you have to remember about wild mushrooms is you always want to make sure that you're cooking them thoroughly. 
there is a substance in wild mushrooms um, that can disagree with some people's stomachs if it's not cooked thoroughly. So it's always a good practice. Not sure how much liquid we really have here. It wasn't as much mushrooms as I was hoping just because I lost a lot to bug damage, but let's see if I can get how much liquid I can get. Uh, not much. We're probably going to skip the gravy tonight. I'm just going to let those cook for a couple moments. So a couple things to remember about oyster mushrooms. They always grow on wood. If you see a white mushroom growing on the ground, do not pick it, do not eat it. Oyster mushrooms have gills. If it is a fungus that has spore, uh, tubes or is smooth underneath, it is not an oyster mushroom. Oyster mushrooms have a pleasant smell. If it smells foul, foul or nasty, um, it might not be an oyster mushroom. Many times there are that particular beetle which is associated with oyster mushrooms, the little black and brown one. Uh, also, mushrooms can come in other colors besides just white. These ones were pretty white, but many people will have tans and grays and um, it's pretty common for mushrooms of the oyster uh, variety to have some variations. Okay, so these are looking pretty good. As you can see, they're browning up nice. So you're getting a little caramelization on them. Not everybody likes to do that, but I do, just because I always like to cook wild mushrooms extra. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off the heat. Normally, um, if we had enough liquid, we would separate that as well, just to make the gravy, but we're not going to have enough tonight. So we're just going to go ahead and take those out. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and put our butter in there. We're going to give another little splash of EVO. And we're going to introduce our garlic and our fresh sage. So you want to kind of saute this, uh, not real hard, maybe a uh, couple minutes. Uh, the butter is more for flavoring. You're going to, once your garlic kind of gets that translucent yumminess, uh, you're probably going to be done. Looks like that's about done. We're going to go ahead and introduce our oysters back in just to warm them up and coat them a little bit. I think I used a tish much olive oil. You can probably go a little lighter than that. But we're just going to kind of meld the everything together here. And there's our finished product. Sage, garlic, oysters. Well, well, thank you for joining me on Trey Runs. I hope to do a few more videos in this series for Catch and Cook, either through uh, fish and game or wild edibles or, or whatnot. Maybe throw out some new recipes here and there. So I hope you like this video. I hope that you learned something from it. Uh, I hope you weren't too turned off about the bugs, but that's a fact of life when it comes to picking wild mushroom. Let's go ahead and try this and see how we did. That's pretty good, guys. You should give it a shot. Bon appetit. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope this kind of gave you a little bit of um, <clears throat> motivation to go out and, and look for wild edibles on your own, especially the world of mushrooms. There's just so many of them. And oysters in particular are an easily identified mushroom. There's not much that looks similar to it. And it's, it's really one of the, the top five safest mushrooms for amateurs. But of course, don't take my word for it. Um, these are some hints to get you started. It's up to you to consult one, two identification guides and make sure that you're making good choices with things that you put into your body. Because ultimately, you're the one who's at risk if you make a mistake. Uh, so if you try the recipe, if you like it, please comment below. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know what you uh, make with your oysters. Uh, hopefully, I'm gonna continue this series again with other edibles. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please hit the subscribe and like button if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the woods. Stay wild.